Welcome to my channel Exploring Metromedica. If you like the channel, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you will receive further videos. In this video, I will be telling you regarding the circuits. <clears throat> it is commonly called as Berberi and the tincture of bark of the root is used to prepare the medicine. In this video, we will be discussing regarding the sphere of action, the clinical indications of Berberi solgaris and the characteristic features. And at the end of the video, I will be telling you regarding a case which has been treated by Berberi solgaris that is the renal calculi. It is one of the well indicated remedy for both biliary calculi and renal calculi and it is having its own classic indications in such conditions. So let us know regarding Berberi solgaris. Now let us try to know about the Berberi solgaris plant. The Berberi flower which is yellow and ill smelling produces red elongated berries of pleasant acid flavor. The fresh bark of the root which is used to prepare our tincture has an extremely bitter taste. So it acts mainly on the kidneys, the urinary bladder, liver and the gallbladder. It acts on the urinary organs producing renal stones. It promotes bile secretion and when there is stress of the bile, it produces gallstones. Kent says that Berberis vulgaris is remedy indicated for people with low state of economy and it is having rheumatic and gouty diathesis. The problem with the gout and rheumatic conditions in Berberis solgaris is in gout, the gouty nodosities which form in the small joints fail to develop because of the low vitality that Berberis solgaris is having. But the pains in these joints persist and there is a casting feature of the pain that the pain radiates from a particular point. If there is a gouty, uh, uh, gout is in this particular small joint but the gouty nodosity has failed to develop there will be pain in this joint and this pain radiates in every direction. So the characteristic feature of Berberis vulgaris as per Kent is that the pain radiates from a particular point in every direction whether it is the pain in the joint or whether it is the pain in the because of the renal calculi or whether the pain is because of the biliary calculi. So whatever pains are there in Berberis vulgaris they radiate from a particular point in different directions. So this is one of the characteristic features that Kent says which makes the prescription of Berberis vulgaris very easy is that the pains radiate in different direction. There is no particular direction of radiating of the pains from the joints, from the renal stones and even from the biliary calculi. So Berberis vulgaris is a remedy suited to people with earthy complexion, with sunken cheeks and blue rings around the eyes, for old gouty constitution, and it acts well in fleshy persons with but with little endurance. So the clinical indications of Berberis vulgaris are that it produces biliary colic, gallstones, joint affections, bladder calculi, renal calculi, auxiliaria, jaundice, splenic affections, and urinary disorders. It is indicated for arthritic and hepatic affections with urinary, hemorrhoidal, or menstrual complaints. In Berberis vulgaris, we are having venous stasis because of which it also produces hemorrhoids. For prematurely old and worn out men and women. So let us know what are the nature of complaints in Berberis vulgaris. The pains, as I said earlier, they rapidly change their locality and character. The character of the pains, they are radiating from one point, shooting outwards or all over, sticking, burning, and smarting pains, soreness of the pain, symptoms alternate. Here, the alternating symptoms in Berberis vulgaris is very important. For example, the thirst alternate with thirstlessness. So whether the person is thirsty, also Berberis vulgaris indicated. Whether he is thirstless, Berberis vulgaris indicated. Hunger alternates with loss of appetite. So loss of appetite and hunger alternate in Berberis vulgaris. So the nature of the complaints, we are having the discharges, which are of the skin, which is dirty and gray. And the chest affections are seen after operations, especially the piles or the fistula. Usually piles and fistula are getting operated uh, every now and then. And these people, if they develop, just affections after that, then Berberis vulgaris is a remedy that you will have to think about. For affections after abdominal operations and for superiority acne. As I said earlier that Berberis vulgaris is having a chief action on the renal system. So let us know its manifestation on the renal system. So in the renal system it produces numbness, lameness, which is painful for pressure and there is a sort of stiffness in that region. So and this region is very sensitive to touch and it is aggravation by sitting and lying down, there is burning and soreness in renal angle. 
This stitching cutting pain from the left kidney follows the course of ureter into the bladder and urethra. This is usually what we find in all cases of renal calculi. So commonly the renal calculi pain radiates along the course of the ureter into the bladder and urethra. Left side renal colic with urging and strangury. There is a rubbing, gurling or bubbling sensation is found in the renal angle. The pain from the kidneys extend along the urethra. It may also extend to the liver, stomach, spleen and the pain may also arrest breathing. So typically a renal calculi pain radiates along the ureter into the bladder, to urethra and also to the inner side of the thighs. But in verbose vulgaris, it may radiate in different directions and to different organs. And there is a peculiar bubbling sensation that is found in renal calculi. The urine is thick, turbid and yellow in color. Red mealy, sand or slimy sediment. So there is red sand in urine. As we know that lycopodium is also a drug with red sand in urine and lycopodium is right sided drug. Whereas berberus is left sided one. And there is white sand in urine also in uh, berberus vulgaris. Another empty is which is right sided. Sensation as if the urine remained after urination. The patient is having sensation as if the urine still remained even after urinating. The discharge from the meatus is uh, very clear before urinating. Pain in the thighs and hips during urination. Urethra burns while not urinating. So even when he is not urinating, there is a burning sensation in the urethra. In acute conditions, the pain is more severe. Immaturia with soreness of the urethra. Urine may be bloody, greenish with thick slimy mucus and jelly-like sediment. Movement brings on or increases urinary complaints. So this movement, I, I, we can call it as a common symptom because the movement will little bit move the calculi also in the renal system and this movement of the calculi brings on the pain. So as we all know that Berberus vulgaris also is having an action on the liver. So when the liver is involved, the GIT is affected. So when the liver is involved, there's a, the taste is bitter, the tongue feels scalded, painful pimple on the tip of the tongue, pains from the stomach to back or reverse. And it is a remedy which should not be forgotten for colicky pain from the gallbladder to the stomach and it is aggravated by pressure. The character of the gallstone colic is it is short, sudden, stabbing and puncturing pain and this pain radiates into different direction. So a remedy to be thought about in gallstone colic. So there is scatter of the bladder with constipation and yellow complexion, constant urging for stool, painless clay colored stool. So clay colored stool, painless is the characteristic feature of Berber's vulgaris. Painless diarrhea with thirst and frequent vomiting and micturation. And there is severe prostration after stool. So let us come to the rheumatism. As I said, it is having a gouty tendency and rheumatic tendency. So the joints are affected. There is rheumatism of the shoulder, arms, fingers, toes and feet. There is a sore and lame feeling in the joints. And this, the pain is burning, stitching, tearing pain. It radiates. To different directions appears in one part then in another part aggravated by jar motion and by walking rheumatic and gotip complaints alternate with urinary complaints so uh, when the patient patient passes lot amount of large quantities of urates in his urine he is having less rheumatic complaints and when the urine is not having the urates in the urine he will be having more of rheumatic and gout complaints so now let us compare the remedies for renal stones Lycopodium stones are right sided, sarsaparilla are right sided, hydrangea left sided, calcarea renalis is a remedy to be given to prevent the formation of renal calculi. So let us know the relations of uh, berberis. It is similar to lycopodium, sarsaparilla and renal colic. It is antidoted by belladonna, antidoted to aconite, follows well after bryonia, sulfur, calibi, and stocks. A dose of lycopodium helps the action of berberic cellulitis. So lycopodium is also having the uric acid diathesis and uh, it helps the action of berberic cellulitis if it has not acted. So as I said earlier that berberic cellulitis is a remedy to be thought about in renal calculi. So here I will be telling you regarding a case which has been treated with berberic cellulitis mother tincture. So as you can see the ultrasonography report of a lady aged uh, 40 years, the right kidney shows calculus measuring 4 to 5 millimeter in size in its lower calyx and the left kidney also shows a calculus measuring 4 to 5 millimeter size in its upper calyx and this lady had a typical pain of berberic vulgaris that is uh, 
radiating in different directions and uh, she had done this investigation on 26th june 2021 uh, she came to me in the month of august and uh, she had taken all sorts of treatment painkillers and some ayurvedic treatment but there was uh, not much relief and uh, so this was a case of bilateral nephrolithiasis with the gastric pain i gave her berberis vulgaris mother tincture eight drops uh, before food three times a day and uh, within uh, two days the pain disappeared so and the investigation was done after about uh, 10 days and on 14th august when in investigation was repeated the there was no calculi or hydronephrosis or cysts in the right kidney and there was no calculi or hydronephrosis or cysts in the left kidney also but however this lady had some probed tenderness in the left iliac fossa or the sigmoid colon colitis and this was a non uh, specific increment this was a chronic problem that she was having and this was you know again uh, mixing with the renal calculi and now i am treating this lady uh, for this uh, tenderness and i had given her depending on the totality natrum car and this tenderness of the abdomen also disappeared after natrum car so these are the references my dear friends uh, clark metra medica then metra medica of homeopathic uh, medicines by sir fotak then borix metra medica and alinsky note so thank you very much my dear friends for staying with me throughout the video if you like the video please subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you will receive further videos thank you thank you once again